Hello, thank you for tuning in with us today. Today I am going to talk about being forgiven. Please, if you know through the word of God that you have been forgiven, please forgive yourselves. This is what we are going to be talking about today. On Romans chapter 3 verses 21 through 31, it says like this. But now a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference. So let's go on these verses right from the beginning. Lord God, we give you thanks for your word. Please speak to us today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen and amen. Well, they had this problem over here and in the times of the Lord Jesus also, when the Pharisees and all of those religious people of the time, they really wanted to point out and get a point across telling Jesus that people can be saved by their works, especially when they brought up to the Lord Jesus that they did works in order to be saved and they were very, very strict and religious about this. But now the word of God is telling us here to the Romans because there was a lot of Jewish and Gentile people all together here. And he's saying, but now a righteousness from God apart from law. So it's not the law, it's, it's apart, it's separated. It's, could be right next to it, could be head on against it, on the side, but it's apart from the law, has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. So apart from this law, that same law was testifying in the Old Testament that this law was coming, the law of through the Lord Jesus, right? So it says, verse 22, this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. So it's, it's, it's this righteousness is not the righteousness by doing good deeds or good works. Many of us could believe that we are so good or so much better than others because we do a few good things, a few good deeds in our lives. But the reality is that God did not find it to be uh, good righteousness when we try to uh, justify ourselves before God by doing good deeds. So he had to step in and he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to work a way of justice to save us. So this is what happens. So that the law and the, and the prophet, they testified about it. And this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. So how are we uh, somebody who is righteous before God now? Is through the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way to all who believe. We could say that, well, Jesus came already, so everybody in the world is saved. It's not so. It's for all of those who believe. So we are to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, to be the Savior of our lives in order to be a righteous person before the sight of of God. We can be a figure like a righteous person before the sight of people, but what about the sight of God who really sees our hearts and our intentions that we have right now and the intentions that we're going to have tomorrow and next year? That's how God sees in us and, and that's a really a picture of our heart in how we really are and who we really are. So it says uh, there's no difference. Why? Where is the difference? Because in the Old Testament, there was a marked difference or people thought they were so different than others because they thought they were more righteous than other people. And it was the religious people of those times. It could very well be that that's what's happening in many religions and in many re religious people today that think they are God's gift to people, right? They're so good, they're so, they're so 
good, they're so holy, and they, they want to be separated from us because the regular people, we don't qualify to be around them. But, but here it says there's no difference for all have sinned. All, everyone, the, the religious leaders, the, the people that go to have a religious fellowship in a place, the people who go to church all the time, the people who don't go to church all the time, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we didn't get to that point to be in the glory of God. So, so, so what is the problem here? It's been since the beginning, since Adam and Eve, when we sin through Adam and Eve and everybody else, including myself and all of us, we, we have sinned. So we, we fall short of the glory of God. We didn't qualify to, to, to participate in it. So it says now in verse 24, and art justified freely by his grace. So the, the only way we can be justified before the presence of God, be, even though our sins and our sinful life, the, the only way is, is to be justified freely by the grace of God. Grace meaning he has given us what we don't deserve. Grace meaning he has given us better than what we deserve. We are justified freely by His grace through the redemption. So we can be justified before God. We were okay before God, right? Freely uh, through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. So, so the redemption is like, you know, when we have, uh, when we get some soda at the supermarket, for example, and, and we pay money for the soda cans or soda, soda bottles, and, and now we lost that money until we go to the what? The redemption center. And I bring the payment, the, 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 the token, the, the sacrifice, whatever that I had to do to get that soda cans and soda bottle, and bring it to the redemption center. Once I bring it to the redemption center, I redeemed my money. I get my money back. The soda can, the, the aluminum, the plastic goes there, and they give me my money that I had lost. Could be five cents, ten cents, twenty cents, depending on the state that you live at. And, and so you get to that place, and, and you just bring them there, and they are you are you redeemed your money. The money that you had lost, you get it back legally, not illegally, legally. You get it back. It's yours totally. You, 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 the, the guy who, the person who's giving you the money, they are totally satisfied with each one of those soda cans, with one of those soda bottles. You, you redeemed your money. You paid the just price. You, you don't owe them anything for that money. And they don't owe you anything either. The deal has been done and everybody has been treated justly. That is what happened at the cross of Calvary. When I was lost in my sins, when I did when I for, fell short of the glory of God, when I was lost on my sins, Bible tells me I was dead in my sins. I, want, I was going to eternal condemnation. But instead, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, I go for free. I've I, I been redeemed. Uh, it, it, everything has been paid for me. I don't owe anything to hell and I don't owe anything to anybody else because the Lord Jesus Christ paid the just price as the cross of Calvary and God took me back to himself and he redeemed me. I did not redeem myself. God took the initiative. God sent the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Death is payment for sin. God sent his son to pay for my sin with the death of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, heaven and earth and hell, they all know that my payment has been totally pay, uh, paid. And I have been redeemed back to my father through the payment on the cross of Calvary with the spilt of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. I have been redeemed because it's through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement to the Lord Jesus Christ. God sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be born on earth and walk among human beings. And now we celebrate it as a Christmas and we have crazy Christmas parties and we have crazy festivities in the name of Christmas. But I really think that when the Lord Jesus Christ was sent by God the Father to be born among us, to be around us, the Lord Jesus Christ came and God the Father cried by sending his son to be born to be a sacrifice of atonement he didn't come to earth and to be living among us to have fun on vacation to have a good time he was born as a baby to be the sacrificial atonement for your salvation and for my salvation and that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. You see this? You have to believe. It's not about, yeah, well, Jesus came, we're all saved. No, no. It's through faith in his blood. Meaning, you have to believe his sacrifice. You have to believe he died for you. You have to be believe him. You, you have to believe that God was good enough and lovingly enough to sacrifice his son as a sacrifice of atonement for your salvation. You have to believe that God has been lovingly enough to go to the extreme of saying, I will sacrifice my only and only son whom I've been together with. For the eternity, I am going to separate myself from him. Send them to the earth. And at the time of the sacrifice of atonement, he will be being my sacrifice. He will be receiving, receiving the wrath of God for the payment of the sinners. To the point that my own son is going to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The only time in the entirety of eternity God separated from the Son, Jesus Christ. Because he was the sacrifice of atonement for you and I. You have to believe in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Without shedding of blood, there is no redemption or forgiveness of sins. So you see, the payment of sins is death. I have to die for my own sins. You have to die for your own sins. But God said, no, no. I will provide salvation for you. And that's what we preach all the time. And that's what we say about the Lord Jesus Christ all the time. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice. You see, it's not my justice. It's not because you were pretty good. Because we're not good. We're, we try to be pretty good. He did this to demonstrate his justice. Because of his forbearance, he had left the sins committed before, beforehand unpunished. 
He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. He demonstrated justice at the present time, so as to, so as to be just and the one who justifies. <laughs> it's not me. It's not you. He is just. And he said, guys, I'll give you my just justice. Because you, you, you can make it. You, you, you're not going to make it. I will provide it. And you and I, because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are before God as a just person. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. For believing in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. For believing in the sacrificial atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where, where, where then is boasting? It is excluded. On what principle? On that of observing the law? No, we cannot observe the law. We can't. That was the problem of the, the, the people of the Old Testament and the New Testament as well with the Lord Jesus Christ. When they came to him, they said, I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm more than good. Why should I need a savior? And listen to this. That's exactly what we say today. Around people say, I don't need, I don't need Jesus. I don't need that church thing. I don't need salvation. I'm my own God. You know, people say crazy things. Uh, I don't need I don't need God to help me. I, I, my own, I am my own savior. I am good enough. No. What principle? Where is the posting? On that of observing the law? No, not on observing the law. No one can observe the law. No one can do the law on, in their lives. We can attempt, we can do pretty good for one day and then forget it. The whole life is full of sins because we break the law every day. No. But on that of faith, the law of faith. What law of faith? The law of believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior sent by God the Father to save us. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. It is not by doing good things that we are saved. It is by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I know, I know, I, I will do my best attempt today to do good things today. But tomorrow I will fail again. And I will fail again. And I will fail again. So I, don't, I can't qualify by my works to save myself. It's only through the Lord Jesus Christ. So what? Is God the God of the Jews only? He's not the God of the Gentiles too. Yes, of Gentiles too. Since here there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised by through the same faith. <laughs> Circumcision just meant I circumcise myself. I will, I will do the law of God. And we fail to attempt to do that. So what is he saying? No. The ones that attempted to do through law, they are saved and justified by faith. The guys, the guys who really care much about the law, they need to be justified by faith as well. Everybody is justified by faith. It is not by works. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. Why? Because without the law of God, there's no sins. Why am I a sinner? Because I, I have told lies, I stole things, um, and whatever else is in, in the Ten Commandments and, and, and the commandments of God. And so what does that mean? We uphold the law. I am a sinner and I know I am a sinner because I have broken the Ten Commandments many times, many times in my life. That's how I know that I need a Savior. When I see the law of God in front of me and I say, God, I cannot do this. I have failed many times. 
The law of God itself points me to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's when I say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Save me. That's how the law brings me to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we are still upholding. So the law can bring me to the Lord Jesus Christ. But the law cannot save me. The law is to show me I am a sinner and I need Jesus Christ. Do you have Jesus Christ as the Savior of your life today? Good. If you did, if you don't, come to Jesus today and ask him to be the Savior of your life. Maybe one of the few choices that we may have in life. Who knows? But don't take chances. Find Jesus today. And finally, God has done everything to provide an ample way to be forgiven of all of our sins in our lives and find God as the Savior of our lives through the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, the creator of the universe, who is also just, has forgiven us from our sins through the Lord Jesus Christ. But even though many times and many people who have been forgiven by God, they are still punishing their own selves and they cannot forgive their own selves. That is my point today. Please enjoy the forgiveness of God. Live your life in peace. That no matter whatever comes to your life, you are okay with God. Don't allow the past and the terrible mistakes that we have made in life before. Come to hunt us today to the point that we cannot even forgive ourselves. Even though God has already forgiven all of our mistakes and sins. Receive the forgiveness of God. And please, forgive your own self and go to sleep tonight with a peace that only God can give you. May the Lord bless you and we'll study the Bible more in the next episode. God bless you.